Hello and welcome to the Heroic Review. This is our weekly episode review, slightly delayed, and this week we are looking at the one where Pinky knows, the episode in which Pinky proves that she is unable to keep a secret surprising no one. Joining me this week is Greg. Hello all. Gray. Hola amigos. PDK. Ana Haseo. And Webshotter. Hello everyone. Okay, so general impressions of this episode starting with Greg. Um, loads of silly physical and otherwise comedy, Pinky freaking out, etc., etc. Decent episode. Great. I like this episode. I don't know if they pushed the Pinkie Pie-ness too far, though. I feel like they might have tried a bit too hard with Pinkie Pie on this one. PDK? I loved it, but everyone knows I love Pinkie Pie. I actually disagree that they tried too hard. I feel like they sort of tried to say, even with little jokes in jokes with Pinky to say, yeah, we know Pinky can be uh, a bit extreme. This is her having to deal with her own extremeness. Webshotter? I enjoyed the episode. I found it to be really, really entertaining. And also, yeah, Pinky was spot on for me. Okay, this is the first episode written by G.M. Barrow, who has written several novels in the My Little Pony universe. And this is the first episode she's actually written. It was an interesting one because so much of it was sight gags and expressions and Pinky trying desperately to keep secrets by and her eyes all getting all swirly and stuff like that. So it was all very visual, which was interesting given that the writer came from a novel background or a novelization background. That's just my thoughts on the author. Right, let's start with our general feedback for the episode. Who wants to go first? I shall. Webshotter, off you go. I thought the episode was completely hilarious, and it was enjoyable and relatable all in one go. It is hard to keep a secret. Especially one that big. I mean, there have been times I've known something that someone else didn't know, and then I accidentally let it slip, and next thing you know, it kind of ruined it. So I can, I can definitely relate to Pinky on this matter. What I thought was quite interesting, which is doesn't get done very often, was the device where she almost told the secret and the people who the secret is about know she almost told the secret. That was unusual. Saved by the shining armor. Yeah, that was unusual. And they were like, oh, I know, you know, you can't, you want to tell, but please don't. Like, there wasn't the usual er comedy of errors where she knows the secret and no one around her does. She was in a situation where she was being specifically told by the secret keeper not to tell the secret that some more backed more pressure she was being tested it was kind of weird and slightly stupid of shiny nama and cadence to tr do this in its entirety they could have made their lives a lot e easier if they just made sure pinky was nowhere to be seen that week if they were like pinky go take a holiday pinky go find yak yakistan again that he took her an afternoon gray <laughs> I was going to say, trying to keep Pinky out of the way, I think that was why they might have told her initially, because Pinky always finds out, it seems like. So if they told her up front, they could have avoided her blurting it out to everyone in the middle of Ponyville when she all of a sudden pieces it together. That is a possibility. Actually, no one told her to keep it a secret, really. If anything, Mrs. she Mrs. Cake took specifically it told Cake. her to keep it a secret. She says, don't tell anyone. This is a big surprise. It's there, it was It was in the text, don't tell anybody, which is why Pinky got so worked up about it. Although she's the kind of character who finds these things out, so it was interesting to see her in the position of trying to keep a secret, given that she's so bad at it, and we all, going into the episode, there was no way, knowing the character, you would expect her to be any good at not telling everything to everyone all of the time. The only person who would be any worse at it would be Rainbow Dash. Ah, uh, okay, I probably missed that. That, that's a question I had with the episode. It, has Pinky never had to hold big secrets like this before? She was very keen on telling Twilight to hold secrets in, but it, has she never had to deal with this? Or does she would deal with this every time she gets a secret? Does anyone recall an episode where Pinky has had to keep a secret? Have they done a secret keeping episode that wasn't the, the very first one with the Pinky promises? Forever. No, the only I don't think we have. I do. Oh. Which episode was it? You're not in this Sorry review. To interrupt, but it's the very same episode. It's the episode where she says she was she locked herself, locked, zipped her mouth, locked her with a key, buried it in a hole, built a tassel on top of the hole, and moved her mouth on top of the hole. That's true. So Pinky has been proven in the past that she is supposedly good at keeping secrets and promises. But she did say specifically she didn't Pinky promise. So that she there was some 
some dodging there by the writer, which I thought was at least a decent nod to the canon. Pinky keeps her pinky promises to the death. PDK? Uh, moving on, because it, although it was a pinky heavy episode, I wanted to say something about them tackling pregnancy or not as much as we, uh, the fans have kind of speculated and everyone knew that Cadence was going to be having a fall at some point. I don't even know where that came from. Does anyone know where in the fandom everyone has just presumed this? Have we just all Wait, of a I sudden come up it, with it? It was the announcement that Princess Skylar toy, wasn't it? Yeah, I think right, that was when okay, it started because yeah. everyone hates Princess Skylar. Everyone was terrified of Princess Skylar. It's an abomination from beyond the ninth dimension. It's just it, a... it is the thing Lovecraft wrote about in his maddest dreams. <laughs> I thought there was a city full of snakes under the desert. That's where Skylar lives. Ah, well, that's her, right. that's her kingdom. That's her sorted out for where she the gets to reign. The kingdom of uh, some unpronounceable eldritch name. I was just interested because it, it's them tackling pregnancy without having a very specifically pregnancy heavy episode where they have to explain to little girls and boys where tiny foals come from but i wonder if they're going to do more with this because what we've seen of cadence is she gets married and now she has a baby she still has no characterization for me i'm still requiring more from the writers to give her more reason to exist than just gets married has baby because that's unfortunately the death knell to any character in you know even just TV, never mind children's TV. Great. I want to agree with PDK here that during season five, they touched a lot of topics that uh, were very, very taboo for most shows, well, most children's shows to kind of touch. And I really appreciate what they've done. You know, they did the death of, or was that season four? I had it. Hold on. I um, think the death discussion was in the Crusaders of the Lost Mark, where they specifically said, if our parents were here, so they have touched on death there in a children's show. And that was not the episode before this one, but the episode before that, I think. Did they also come close to touching that subject with Tank? Uh, well, that was uh, coping with death, yeah. Tanks for the memories. But yeah, they've done a really well job of dealing with death, as we've seen in a couple episodes, pregnancy in this episode. And one that really hit with me was the Kitty Mark episode where they dealt with difficult parents. So I've really appreciated what they've been doing subtly throughout every episode. I think they've done a fantastic job with all that. They have done pretty well at dealing with adult issues. The only time I think they've mishandled it was I think that the episode about bullying Bab Seed was not done as well as it could have been. But I think in terms of a children's entertainment... It had a damn catchy song, though. It did have a catchy song. It had a little rock musical number. But if, apart from that episode, um, most of the time they've taken on quote-unquote mature themes, themes that, you know, somewhat taboo in children's television programming. The certain the, the kind of thing that get an event episode about it. I think they've handled really well, and in, in the spirit of the show. So, well done, Hasbro Studios, for allowing them to do this sort of thing. So, Cadence, she's never going to get any characterization whatsoever. Probably Yay. not now. We're five seasons in, and come on, nothing's happened apart from her being nice. Well, we still have a few episodes left of this season, so she might have some more screen time. Spoiler! Set. She will not have any more screen time. Cadence no! has no characterization. Her biggest achievement has been being thrown at Sombra. Yeah. But, yeah, I was going to say, the highlights of Cadence is being thrown at Sombra, fighting a worm with Twilight, getting and now married, having a baby. and getting a baby. She is following the traditional career path of the average working woman. Well, this is this is my problem. Representation in My Little Pony, you know, the entire season is built on little girls and, you know, girls in general. They should have different representations of girls. There is not just one girl character in My Little Pony like in every other TV show ever. You don't just have one. You can't just be a oh girl who's into, you know fashion and looking good or uh, you know the tomboy or you've got all these different representations and the entire premise of my little pony lauren faust's vision was there's so many different you know avenues you can go down you can give everyone their own little character to identify with and what we've got in cadence is oh if you get older you should want to be a princess get married and have a baby 
that's what I'm reading from this, and I'm just mm, but, uh, boring. But don't the girls who do want to be married and become princesses deserve at least a bit of representation? They've got four princesses to choose from. Um, well, and, yeah, but and those... yeah, but they don't need to be watching their TV show going, yay, now I want a baby. They could be going around doing everything but like having adventures and stuff. That's for later. You don't have to shove in your children's TV show. Oh, there's also, you know, the bland character who has a baby. All right, you got a point. I was going to say that going along with you said, then aren't they doing exactly that with Cadence? If they've got... I don't know the exact number, but you know, around ninety percent of the people of the ponies in the show are female, and they have a wide range that they show throughout. And they also have to have that obligatory one, for lack of a better term, trophy wife. Well, I wouldn't say trophy wife, but at the same point, we've got Mister and Missus Cake who've got their family set down. You know, there isn't a lack of representation of just where babies come from. But I'm just kind of my point wouldn't stand if she had a personality. My point is rooted in the fact that she's boring and the only thing about her we know is she wanted to get married and she was loving, you know, had in this relationship forever. They had a big, massive wedding that she'd been planning forever because that's what little girls do. And then she's now having a baby. Unless we get something more from her, that is all we will ever see of Cadence. How many people do you know like that in real life, though? Can I interrupt a moment and just point out that Cadence is not the trophy wife. Cadence rules an empire. Shining, yes, shining armor is trophy, trophy husband. husband. Okay, so, good point. <laughs> so let's just let's Even just worse. make sure all our ducks are in a row for this one. Okay, Cadence, by all rights, should be the more interesting character between the two of them, and yet she is not. Okay, so basically the point of this whole tangent is that Cadence, if you're going only by the TV show and disregarding the supplementary materials, is boring. Yes. yes. She's pink and she's a princess, that's all that matters. And she's going to have a princess baby that they can sell, that they have already begun selling toys for. Merchandising! It's, ah, yes. oh, merchandise. We need merchandise, guys. We need heroic tale merchandise. Oh, I would That's love a I, I work at a tr- uh, printing company. We can do that. We can do okay, that. Okay, guys, can we move forward, please? Okay, so moving on from that. Well, really, the biggest that was the biggest touchstone of the episode, I think. It was the Apart from the fact that there was a scavenger hunter, there was no book at the end of it for Twilight. I would have been pretty pissed if I was her. She's probably still angling for that book somewhere. She's probably like, you know, sending messages to going, yeah, you're having a baby, but seriously, where's the book? Dude, where's the book? On. Shining, you prick. Good prank. Where's the book? Someone did make a comic about that, didn't they? Yes, someone did. Actually, TJ Pones did. I just totally blanked on that until now. It's not even my joke. What a waste of time. What a waste of everyone's <laughs> time. I'm so sorry. So, what, well, I... what is online criticism of cartoons but a waste of everyone's time? That's true. Hey. I thought it was so, character. Are there any other aspects of this episode that we want to discuss? The characterization of Pinky? I think the characterization of Pinky was loud and spot on. Wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube pony. Yeah, there was a lot of visual gags. Pinky is the visual gag horse, which has. I don't been have the a cases. point for that. I just wanted to say it. <laughs> it's good that you got the chance to say it. Why should I? Mayor Mayor seems to also know the secret as well. Yes, that yeah, was I think we weird. everybody along the way who had something to do with the scavenger hunt clearly knew as well and was having problems keeping it secret because they were too very excited. I was thought it was really weird that they had Mare Mare as a character who knew what was going on and was also hinting at it. Like, it, I don't understand why they felt the need to introduce her as that. I don't. I, I don't it did seem a bit know. superfluous. Yeah, it seemed. I mean. They were using the the Hall of Records for part of the scavenger hunt, but there was no reason to have Mare Mare from hemming and hawing at the corners, wringing her her hooves and thinking, oh man, I wish I could tell everyone about this baby news, except to contrast with Pinky. But the fact that Mare Mare wanted to tell the secret as well means that Pinky was was sort of the same thing as Pinky. There wasn't really any need for it. And I think I actually found it slightly distracting from the core of the episode. If anything, it could be along the lines of, like, say, a while back, the royal wedding in the UK or over in London. And I'm just using this as an example. I'm, it, this may be a poor example, but still. Say that the royal wedding was supposed to be a secret and, like, only a certain number of people were supposed to know. That is, like, really big news. And yeah, but why? Imagine why, trying to keep I know that it's a hard to keep it a secret, but in terms of writing the episode, why would you write that character to know something and hint about it? It didn't really add anything. I actually enjoyed Mirror Mirror being a part of this episode, and though it wasn't 
much and it didn't do much. I liked that they had that kind of undertone to it. There was Mare Mare who was English. Well, she was a bit impish. I'll give you that. We don't get a lot of two Mare Mare. Mare Mare is also a pretty bland character. We know that she likes rainbow clown wigs and jokes about that. And making inspirational speeches. And making inspirational speeches at other people's weddings. Very specific speeches. And don't forget that she also dyes her mane she does, and tail she gray. She has pink hair. That's... Yeah, she needs that dignified look. I have to say that is probably my favorite joke of the entire show. Like, bar none, that is my favorite joke of the entire show. She's Pinky Cousin. That's why she has pink in a tail, and that's why she has a hard time keeping a secret. Terrible. If anything, I think the reason why the Mayor Mayor was written in was because Shining Armor and Cadence had already planned the scavenger hunt, so they ended up having to try to get a hold of Mayor Mayor to get permission you're, you're, to use... Webshotter, oh, you're yeah. justifying it and trying to do a justification in universe where we're trying to go what was the point of her there was no need to write that in you could have just had them turn up to the hall of records and it'd be staffed by just no one or just a guy who sat behind a counter going yep whatever you didn't need mayor mayor in as the thingy in universe or out of universe there's no real justification it's just maybe they're trying to make sure more background ponies are used i don't know it's an excuse to use the character yeah continuity is not i think continuity Exactly. It's just a continuity nod, I think. And to be honest, the show thrives on continuity nods at this point because there's so much continuity to nod back to. Plus, Mayor Mayor could just be... This is incontinuity justification. I'm going to pre... pre a Mayor Mayor could just be desperate for stuff to do since technically she's outranked by a princess now. It's true. I would have loved to see the power struggles like House of Cards. This is tangential, but I'm pretty sure when it comes down to it, you still need some kind of mayor to run a village slash town, whatever Ponyville counts as, as opposed to the princess who sits in a tower and then goes off on random adventures because of a map said so. Pretty sure that's how that works. It's true. Well, that's the division of power here. Twilight does the magical princessy stuff, and Mayor Mayor does the uh, bureaucracy. Yes. Oh, so anyway, moving on. Um, Pinky, you know, broke the fourth wall again. Close the episode. Lovely. There's just one thing I wanted, really wanted to point out. Sorry. I didn't even know you could have just joined the review. <laughs> yes. Yeah, this point. Come on, what is it? Nay, I just wanted to say this is the first episode in which they referred to Mayor Mayor by the name Mayor Mayor. Oh, snap. Oh, That's good correct. Point. It is the very first time she's been confirmed in canon as being called Mare Mare, which was not her name until horse fans started calling her it. And merchandise. And merchandise started calling her it because of horse fans. So this is another example of horse fans getting to create something in this show. I think that's pretty, that's actually pretty good. That's pretty cool. All right. I'm pretty happy with the Mare Mare discussion. Okay, well, that was our heroic review of The One Where Pinky Knows. Joining me this week was Greg. Thank you for listening all. Gray. See you all later. PDK. Young. Webshotter. See you in the future. And with special guest Funk, Deaf Funk, Nay! this was the heroic review. Thank you for listening. <laughs> and be lovely to each other, and good night, everybody. 